Sarah Brady of Iron Fire. I'm here just a few days before the 2024 UTMB with Esther Shilag. How are you, Esther? I'm good. Thanks for having me. Great. It's great to see you again. And when did you get to Chamonix? I came here for the Hoka train camp, which was end of July. Okay. And since then I have been here and also partially in Switzerland. Okay. Uh, so came back for the race actually just yesterday evening. Okay, very good. And I know you're familiar with this route already. You've raced it in uh, 2022, you were fifth, and you did some of it last year. But did you get out to wreck it again? I did. I, mm. I did <coughs> two times the recon. Okay. Uh, so, yes. Okay. I, and also I have some of the memories. <laughs> okay, very good. I'm sure they're ingrained. <laughs> um, and so you placed third at Western States again for the second time. Well done, like an amazing time this year. So um, how has your recovery been from that the past few weeks? Thank you so much. Yes, that was a very nice day. And the recovery has been good. Like I have no injuries um, and um, I restarted the uh, I would say jogging after four days, but real running or long long runs I didn't really do till I didn't get back here to Chamonix. Uh, so the the months of July was I was training, but it was uh, just easing back into running to make sure that I'm well rested and there are no hidden injuries. And I think also mentally it was good, you know, to give some time to the family. And uh, yeah, um, so. I think um, seeing that I'm doing the two, 200 milers uh, within two months, it's, it has been okay, good. Okay, great. And then um, obviously you took extra recovery time, but when you did kind of resume your training, have you changed it much from the flat, fast training you do for Western States? Have you taken out your poles and tried to get in more climbing? <laughs> Yes, yes, that's a, that's an interesting experience <laughs> because after all that fast running, you get the pose and you get the hiking and everything slows down and you think like, ah, this is extremely slow and yeah. it's like, what <laughs> is happening? And, but I also realized that probably last year I went with the same like speed into the race rather mm -hmm. than changing gears okay. and adopting myself to what UTMB requires so it's I hopefully I'm aware <laughs> of the of the changes of the terrain and um, I I, I to, and, and ready to find my rhythm okay that sounds good because like the opening section of UTMB is quite runnable and I suppose you could like mistakenly get into Western States mode in that first few kilometers. <laughs> yes, yeah. exactly. Okay. Um, and then you had a really good result here um, the year before last in 2022, um, when you were still fairly new to big distances. I think it was your first 100 miler, isn't it? Yes. Yeah, yeah. and you placed fifth I then. remember you waiting me at Valor Yeah, that was so <laughs> <laughs> you were just flying. <laughs> um, but obviously that was a brilliant run, but you've got so much more experience since that in the last few years and you've two more 100 milers done. So is there anything that because of what you've learned that you'll do different this time? I do think that that was my good UTMB. So it's still something that even though it was the first 100 miler race that I did, it's still uh, like it was a it was a race that I, 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 was, I went back in my mind and thought what I did well and how things went during that day. Um, so and for sure, like the other races that I did since then give me more experience. Mm -hmm. um, uh, sometimes it's uh, we are, like I'm not necessarily aware of how like I am different compared to 2022. Okay. But, you know, I always hope that my fitness is better, that I am I am I am in a better shape and mm -hmm. and with the experience also I I am. I am much more focused on also other small details that my that I might didn't think about that in 2022. Okay, mm. I suppose things like kit and nutrition and that you just have more honed. Yes, yes, and mandatory gear. Okay, yeah, lighter. Yeah, oh great, <laughs> that's important. Um, and then when we first got to know you, at Iron Fire a few years ago it was 2021. And I think that was when a lot of the running world got to know you. And then you had a lot more going on. You were working in the field of art curation as well, and you're doing a PhD. So just wondering now, 
do you still have all this as well or have you transitioned into full-time running? I, I have to submit the final version of my dissertation end of September. So okay. after UTMB, the, I, I have to clean up the last things in the dissertation and, and submit it to, to the library. Um, and um, I got into a postdoc, uh, so okay. I, that is what I will start after. And um, I, I do some advisory, but it's, it's really just a few hours and it's very minimal. Um, they, they are more pressure projects at the moment. Okay. I can't handle more uh, because I also want to make sure that I have enough time with my, with my daughters. Of course. Yeah. Okay. And do you find it actually helpful for your running to have like other things and other projects on the side to switch your brain over to? Absolutely. Like I do love what I do, like uh, the, you know, the, the uh, PhD and also the advisory. Um, for me, it's so important that I am intellectually challenged. So I, I, I just realized that I need to be challenged physically, but also intellectually. And it just keeps, keeps me grounded. And what I find that as long as I make sure that I am not stressed, instead okay. I am like, like recharging myself from, from having more on my plate, it's, it's a good thing. And okay. it, uh, I also think that sometimes, you know, with the lo a lot of training, it's so good that when I focus on something else, even though it's maybe the PhD or maybe advisory, but still it's uh, totally not about running. So it's a good, okay. it's, it's almost like recovering because you are not thinking about running. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That sounds good. Um, and then are you still involved in the Pro Trail Runners Association? Yes. You do some work for them too. And is that a big time commitment or how does that fit in? We have a, so I'm co-leading with Caitlin Garvin, the, the Women Equality Working Group. And uh, we have an amazing, uh, group of women um, uh, that uh, like we generate a lot of <laughs> projects for ourselves which is really good uh, I have to say that during this uh, uh, like two months or two and a half months I was um, like I uh, I was a bit more from the distance like getting connected to all this because I want to make sure that I want, when I do something I can do it well okay uh, so but after September there are already things that I have to like deal with and I'm looking forward to that but um, yeah it's it's a really like what with PTRA and the women equality working group we are doing I think it's really important for the sport yeah, for sure. Yeah, you're doing fantastic work and I loved your campaign at Western States with the t-shirts. <laughs> so that's uh, grown up into something bigger and yeah. not related only to how to say to the elite or the live stream. Mm -hmm. uh, and um, now it became a woman trail fund and okay. there are t-shirts available at the village in uh, English and also in French. Oh, very good. Uh, and it will be a really, uh, it's a fund that aims to be really inclusive and global. Yeah. Um, so now we are working to put together a steering committee and um, it will fund projects that um, the the committee decides and yeah. and and uh, focus on. So, okay, that's yeah. brilliant. That's wonderful to be part of. Okay, yeah. and then just getting back to the task at hand, which is yes. running around Mont Blanc. <laughs> um, is there any part of the course that you're particularly excited about or particularly dreading? I. I decided that this year I will break it down into the countries rather into okay. the big, big aid stations. So from Chamonix <laughs> I will run to Col de la Seine and mm -hmm. then to Col Ferry and then to the top of Trient and okay. then back to Chamonix. So I think that makes it exciting, yeah, you know, crossing good. countries. Yeah, <laughs> okay. And um, I I really love the Italian part actually. I have yeah. to say that that's really uh, beautiful mm -hmm. and, and nice. But in general, I, I think it's a course that I, I, I like. like yeah. I even like the part that is after Champilac, to be honest. But yeah. you just need to be in a good shape. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it can be soul crushing if you're not. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Very good. Um, and do you have plans for after? Or are you going to stay around here for a while? 
No, I'm I'm going back to Hong Kong. Okay. So uh, it's time to go back. I I left Hong Kong before Western States, so it, it's uh, it's time to go back. And also, my daughter Emma is already back because she started school. So oh, okay. I Very want, good. I, I want to see her. Yeah. I suppose your season is a little dictated by their season then with school. Uh, yes. Um, yes, but uh, because this year is the second year, so my husband took care of her. Okay. And I have here with me the younger one, Noemi. Oh, okay. So Very good. That's yeah. good. Um, well, you seem to be the queen of multitasking, so... Um. Uh, no, <laughs> just, uh, yeah. just uh, trying to focus always on the thing I do. So it can sound a lot, but yeah, yeah. it's... it's uh, it's not actually. Okay. When I do something, I do that thing. Okay, one at a time. Okay, yeah. very good. Um, well, I hope you have a fantastic run. We look forward to seeing you out there. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thanks.